Okay, moving on to the next team in the Big Ten that we will be going over today, and this is going to be the team in the Big Ten that I have finishing in 11th place, and that would be Jim Ferry entering his first season as the interim head coach of Penn State. And Penn State is a team that actually was in the headlines a little bit during the offseason when their head coach, Pat Chambers, uh, was let go or he resigned, whatever it was. Uh, it was a mutual disagreement uh, to, to part ways, and uh there were allegations about the way he was treating some of the players on the team, but he's no longer there, and it's pretty crazy because this happens just when Penn State really had their best basketball season in a really long time. And last season, just like any other Penn State season, I really was not optimistic at all. I remember two years ago, they started, I believe it was 0-12 in Big Ten play, and it's not like they didn't have talent, and it's not like they were getting blown out. Each and every game was close, and for me, a lot of that has to fall on coaching and a Adjustments. So even though Pat Chambers did a really, really good job last year leading the Penn State Nittany Lions to which would have been an NCAA tournament appearance if the pandemic doesn't happen, I don't think he was the main reason why Penn State all of a sudden really was able to surprise people last year. So he did, he deserves credit, but I don't think him leaving is going to really affect Penn State that much. I think if you were high on Penn State with Pat Chambers, there's no reason for you to be on uh, high on Penn State without Pat Chambers, and it's unfortunate because Penn State last year was really good. They had one of the best one-two punches in all of college basketball last year in Lamar Stevens, who was just a really good go-to scorer. I feel like any time Penn State really needed a bucket where they were struggling on offense, Lamar Stevens was able to deliver, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. He was awesome. He was really reliable and really was a consistent score for Penn State. Now, Penn State does bring back Myrian Jones, the 6'3 junior who averaged 13.3 points per game last year, 2.7 rebounds per game, 3 assists per game, and about 1 steal per game. He was really consistent as well, and he added in that punch with Stevens and Mike Watkins, who we'll get to in a little bit. But I really like Myron Jones' game. I think he has a chance to be a big, an all-Big Ten player. He could really play. They also bring back a couple guards, including Miles Dredd, Isaiah Brockman, and Jamari Wheeler. Wheeler is going to be a senior this season. He was their starting point guard last year, averaged about 4.3 rebounds and three assists per game. I think if you are a Penn State fan, one thing that you would really want to see for this upcoming season would be maybe a little bit of an improvement from Jamari Wheeler because he's dynamic. I like how he could get in space. I would love to see, though, a little more on the offensive side of the ball from him. And then they also bring back uh, Miles Dredd, who I would like to see him shoot the ball a little bit better. I think Penn State playing this four guard lineup, it could possibly work. And we're going to get to Seth Lundy in a little bit as well when we get into the front court. But a backcourt of Wheeler, Jones, and Dredd isn't that bad. I think losing Curtis Jones isn't really going to kill them. He was a guy that was just added on the team for depth last year, never really stood out, the former transfer from Indiana and Oklahoma State. So I actually like Penn State's backcourt. The problem is the front court. And Seth Lundy's a really good freshman. He had a really good freshman year. He's going to be a sophomore this year, averaged 5.3 points, 2.7 rebounds and half an assist per game. I think if you watched Penn State last year, you would be able to tell that those numbers are a little misleading. He was really good shooting the ball, and I think he's going to get even better this year. And I do think one of the main reasons why I'm a little bit higher on Penn State than most, and I understand when you look at the standings and you're going to say, wow, Zach, you have Penn State in 11th place. So you're higher on them than most. Yeah, the only reason for that is because I actually think Marion Jones and Seth Lundy could actually be one of the best one-two punches in the Big Ten. And I feel like last year Penn State had that in Stevens and Watkins and it's they they were really good and I understand they don't have those guys back this year but at the same time I think Penn State maybe with a new coach if I'm a Nittany Lion fan I would love for them to maybe seek a little bit of a newer identity and what I mean by that is play the four guards around John Hurrah at the five and I understand John Hurrah is not a guy who you could compare to Mike Watkins at all but he's a senior you just don't need him to be bad and I feel like the best role for him would just be to fill a role and that role would be rebounding blocking shots just really doing all of the dirty work now for the Penn State fans that are saying he could just replace Mike Watkins production. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to buy that just because Watkins was really good throughout the last couple seasons and he really was able to make an impact especially on the defensive side of the ball when he was on the court and for me that's what I think this Penn State team might just miss the most. Now you look at their bench the tallest guy on the team 
is Harar at 6'9", and then you look at the tallest guy off the bench, it would be Abdu Simbilla at 6'8", the freshman. So I don't necessarily know how Penn State is going to be able to do it on the defensive side of the ball. I'm not necessarily sure how many stops they're going to be able to get, um, but... I like their backcourt. Their frontcourt isn't great. And when you don't have a coach, kind of similar to Maryland, that who we're going to talk about in a little bit, when you don't have a coach that puts you over the top, and Jim Ferry is a guy who coached at Duquesne for five years. He failed in the Atlantic 10, to be honest with you. And I understand Duquesne is not the easiest job in college basketball. But at the same time, um, it's not like he really was able to put them over the top. And when I look at this Penn State team, I don't think they're a roster that could just succeed by theirself. I, they're gonna, I think they're going to need some good coaching in there. And the losses of Stevens and Watkins, they hurt on both ends of the floor. But um, the depth in the, on the team is not awful. The recent recruiting classes by Pat Chambers were not awful. Myron Jones can be, once again, an all-conference guard. I do think Seth Lundy is on pace to have a breakout season. And especially towards the back end of last year, I feel like if we would have had a Big Ten tournament and an NCAA tournament, Seth Lundy would have been a guy that would have a little more buzz going into this season. Because that's the thing. When the NCAA tournament and all the conference tournaments get canceled, I said this a lot of times on these preview podcasts, it really halted where... I think with my college basketball, because I judge so much in the preseason rankings on how teams did in the NCAA tournament, which players were trending in that tournament that are coming back this year, things like that. So I'm really curious to see what exactly guys like Lundy do for this season. If his breakout that he was trending towards at the back end of last regular season, if it was really warranted, but I feel like Penn State last year, they were in a really good position to miss the big dance. Unfortunately, they lose their two players when the coronavirus cancels the NCAA tournament. And I feel like this season, Penn State does have a slight, slight chance of making it, but I wouldn't be too confident in it. And the Big Ten schedule is obviously going to be really tough. I think their guards make enough plays to put them in 11th place.